Green, 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 green. Green, green, green. Hey, Robot, get him in here. We're about to be lit. And the ancestors are looking out for us. Todd Hayes is disposable, man. And the ancestors. And the ancestors are looking out for us. Todd Hayes is disposable, man. Okay, you see that chair right there? See how big it is? Yeah. Now look at the poke chair under. Scroll down, look at the poke chair under. Never yeah. have it been made yeah. so clear. Young TV. Young we running the game right TV. now. Young TV. Time to take over. Hottest in the game. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you just not too late. Share like on your Instagram, Facebook. If you too late. We broadcasting live from 2030, baby. Uh-huh. Taking over the game, baby. Oh, yeah. Young. Mm -hmm. Hit that light. Young. Mm -hmm. Get them lights up in the air, you heard me? Young. Mm -hmm. Ride by. Hotel. It's long. Young. Assalamualaikum. Flow left. TV. Hit that light. Damn. See how they do me? How about now? You got the fan? You got the sound now, y'all? Yeah, somebody playing. They playing games. See how they do me? And they're here for me. Making it. They making it uh, hesitate me. You see that? That's funny. And we're right here by the internet. And it's high speed. Super high speed. So I'm trying to figure out what the game. But see, you know, they, they do us, you know, they uh like the Native American tapes, they still got that. The one that we did, uh the Turtle Island, they still got that on uh on hold. Anyone, any stuff, the stuff like that, they do not like. I'm starting to figure it out the Turtle Island tape, the anything by Native Americans. So uh about Trump talking talking to you on that level. So it's magic. We're going to a little bit of magic. Why uh we warming the stage up with uh I guess I'm gonna open an act for phase when he get ready to come out. Yeah, but we're gonna warm the stage up for you on, on this magic thing.
And keep in mind, like, the root word of magic is dealing with magnetism. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's magnetism, man. And then if you're dealing with magnetism, uh, one of the key words in magnetism, uh, when you're dealing with magnetism, is influence. When you have the power to draw people to you. When you have the power to draw people to you. Right? And so keep in mind the name of the prison. Influence. Influence Colorado. So it's dealing with magic. Because influence is the mag is dealing with magnetism to draw people in. So they are afraid of your ability. The people that's in Florence, they are afraid of their ability to ma of magnetism, of magic. They're afraid of their magic. Because keep in mind that the guys that put them in there are wizards. The guys that wear the crowns and know about the mounds. They uh they wizards. So we're dealing with a we're dealing with because uh we, we was on a um the brother Amun page the other day and uh there was asking a couple of questions. They said, Are you a witch? And I said, No, I'm not a witch. And they said, uh, say, What are you then? I say, I'm out the ancient mystic order Melchizedek, the green light, right? And then uh but they Yeah, hey, now I'm coming to the stage, phase one. What's good? I see it. <laughs> right, yeah. I hey, see hey, it. hey, hey, man, I ain't know you, man, you doing it big. I ain't know you was on uh, Clubhouse, uh, like, with the guys going back and forth on Clubhouse. I, I was like, damn, man, like, so Clubhouse, I need to figure out how to get on there. But, uh, yeah, but you. What show you talking about? Huh? Which role you were talking about? Like, it's a whole bunch of, like, the, uh, the one you did with Wack, though, with Wack, yeah. 100, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, damn, he was, he. He talking to real industry guys about what's going on in the industry. So I was like, damn, so Faye's already up there, you know what I'm saying? He already up there. Then, then when I think about you too, like I was thinking about you today, and I said, uh, I think about that artist that, uh, I can't remember his name, Wale or something. I say uh, he kind of resembled him a little bit. And, you know what I'm saying, your music is hot like his. Like, it got that that energy. Like, like his name, it ain't a, it's like, it's aggressive, but it's like, it's, it's like, Cause we gotta be with, with the music. Cause people was wondering why is uh phase so hard in his music, and I was telling them that if he can't, like that's why I, I put out the music like that. We had to add a little bit of like hardness to it because what they doing with the music with with little Nas, this is all magic. You know they doing magic, you know? yeah. and um, with all these guys, how they promote to the kids, they making what's really perverted and bad. Make anything that is cool. It's not cool. That's not cool. So, mm -hmm. so when, when you come out with so with stuff like Source, right? Like the song Source mm -hmm. and the video, it's like hard, it's raw. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I appreciate that. yeah, the, yeah, the people, the people we got to get to, they love it. They love that type of energy, right? And then you got the positive uh, side to it too. So they love that, and it's gradu it's gravitating to more of the young crowd, and they listening to that type of that type stuff. So. But right. like now that we got you here, tonight's topic is the secret of magic. And uh, I mean, we, you can go in and start out. We can take questions, whatever, however you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? And we got you. Uh, hey, yo, one quick announcement before uh, you go in, Face. Let me uh, show them this. Uh, let me show them this flyer real quick. I got you. Uh, let me show them this flyer. Okay. Sure. Um, um. All right, y'all. So for y'all just tuning in, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Also, Phase One got ten books that he authorized and written. Right. If you want to get those books, right, you're gonna what you're gonna do is you're gonna send him a cash app to play for change. We're gonna have it have it posted right here. You're gonna see it as it comes up. Take it. I don't know why this computer ain't got nothing on it. I don't know why it takes. They stalling it. But uh, he got 10 books that he wrote. You're going to get those 10 books. What you would do is cash app him, right? And this is the cash app right here at the bottom of the screen. Play for change. Play for change, right? And what you would do is leave, leave your emails in the in like the little bar. When you cash app him, leave the email right there, right? So he'll know that you want the books, right? If you don't, if you just want to sell some, you already got the book. 
books, you want to just show them some love, just send them a cash app. But if you, if you haven't got the books, send them an email when you send the cash app, right? Now, don't send the cash app and don't send the email and then say you ain't get the books because you ain't sending no email. We ain't know you wanted the books. So, all right, so make sure you send the email if you want the books. So we have to make that quick uh, announcement. Now, let's get back to it. Okay. I appreciate it, All right. Let's stop sharing this. Uh, let's stop. Okay, yeah, we got to make that announcement at the beginning so everybody can, you know, pick up on that first, right? Because everybody don't watch the whole, whole, we do it at the end, but everybody don't watch the whole, all the way to the end, so we do it at the beginning, right? Um, okay. Yeah, so that. now, this is, uh, do you got Cash App? Uh, I mean, I mean, PayPal. Uh, do you got PayPal? Uh, phase one, somebody asked him, do you got PayPal? I don't. Uh, I don't. But anybody that can you hear me? PayPal, you can DM me if you okay, need okay. PayPal. Uh, DM me on Instagram, F A I S E. O N E okay, If you need PayPal, DM me. But I don't have PayPal. I, but I know how to do that. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. All right. So now, now we can get started. Hey, I'm probably that green light hitting the planet. So magic, man, magic. Right. What uh how did you want to start this out? Talking about the secret of magic. What is the secret of magic? We can start it like that, and we can do it both ways too. So it don't have to just be me going, 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 even though I know people appreciate it. We can still do that. If you see a question that pop up and you want to address it or you think it's a good question or somebody that asked it, you want to put it forth, I'll, I'll stop. Just cut me off and I'll come in and I'll address it. You understand? What okay. is the secret of magic? It's really saying who. It's really saying who. Who is the secret of magic? Or who is the secret to magic? You understand? Because as I've explained to people before, the who is the ancient Egyptian creator force. Right, where people speak of the tetragrammaton Yahweh or Yahuwah with the four letters, which you literally saying, we say tetragrammaton, four letters. And don't forget that grammar isn't just dealing with the letters, it's still saying that there's a message that you need to be picking up on. So when people are saying Yahuwah, right there in the center is who. And when people knock on your door, do, 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 what do you say? Who is it? All right. And there was a being that was referred to as Ta. Okay. And Ta was the one who was referred to as the opener. You understand? So when Ta came through the knock on the door with the three knocks, like the Masons, like we went over, right, with the Hiram Biff when they were speaking of the number three of the three knocks, okay, with the ante room, when Ta knocks on your door, you were supposed to open it. Ta is another way to say Teo, all right? When you're saying Ta, Teo, Tahuti, Theo, Theocracy, all of this dealing with God. Teos, okay, it's all God. So when we were speaking in terms of who, all right, that question could be answered. And you would just have to search and see who it was that you were speaking about, not just the creative force, but who came in the name of that creative force. So if we were saying, test every spirit with the spirit, okay? And we go back to the God of the beginning, which is ancient Kemet. That's the farthest back you're going, all right? Then the God of the ancient Kemet time period, the creator, as people are saying it, of the ancient Kemet time period would be who? And anybody who came in the name of who, all right, those will be the ones who brought forth the science or what you call the secret, which is the sacred of magic. So who is the secret to magic? Okay, because you could be the one who touches what's referred to as the all spark. I could be the one who touches what's referred to as the all spark. If I'm 100% evil, I can still access who? You understand? If I'm 100% evil, the next person, the next woman, the next man can still access who? But if they're 100% good, they can still access it. You understand? That's where you get the Transformers War of the Decepticons as opposed to the Autobots. Where I broke down to people in the books, I explained that the Decepticons are the deceptful icons. All right? You just say Decepticons, you get Decept icons, but you see the deception in there. Deception, Decepticons, flipped around the I-C-O-N to C-I-O-N, you get Deception. All right? And the ones who are working with the deception come with Shaitan. Or the dragon, the old serpent that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 12, where they spoke about somebody deceiving the whole world. And it was important because they were extraterrestrial beings that they were speaking about, which the Transformers are and the Transformers franchise. Those are extraterrestrial beings. And there was a war that took place in the heavens. OK, and that was Michael and his angels fault and the dragon and his angels fault. OK, so then those angels, those extraterrestrials are speaking of two groups of beings, one being called the disagreeables, another being called the agreeables, which is what? Ra -a, OK, versus the Tob. So you say Tob, you're saying good. 
So say all toll bots. It's right there in the center. Toll. All toll bots. All right. And then you say the disagreeables or the uh, the deceivers, you say Decepticons. So both of them were at war over what was referred to as the all spark or the light of the most high or the light of El Kalum, the all. All right. People think El Kalum is agreeable. It's not. <laughs> El Kalum is. People think that Lucifer is automatically meaning disagreeable. It doesn't. It just means that you're carrying whatever that light is. You understand? So anybody who has the ability to can access the light and carry the light. What happened? Can you hear me? You muted. Can you you said like it, the screen cut off and then came back on. That's what, like it, it blanked out. So I was like, damn, what the hell just happened? But then it's, it's working fine now. I don't know what's going on. Hey, y'all see be, us good out there? I wouldn't be surprised with this live, uh, y'all elder. Yeah, but you for the sake, okay. All right, so you must finna go in. Hey, so go in and keep uh damn. So where you was well on the part where you said um said, just because someone is referred to as Lucifer does not mean that that being is evil in the all sports. You know, yeah, yeah. If we're dealing with it linguistically, now if you're dealing with it from just a religious standpoint or your perception of what you hear or feel when you think of Lucifer, that's a whole different conversation. Like I taught people before, God to you, okay is the shaitan to the person who worships shaitan. You understand? Which is why a satanist should not refer to themselves as a satanic being or a satan worshiper because they're saying they worship their opposition. That doesn't make sense. You should let them know that what they're really trying to say is they worship God, but they don't worship the God that you worship. Or they don't work with the God that you work with. So the Christians have a dilemma there because the next time they hear Lucifer, they think it's to only be in the context of the religious books, but it was a word before your books took it on to place it there. And that word was saying someone who carries that light. Now, in Masonry, Rosicrucianism, the ancient mystic order of Melchizedek, uh, uh, the Wiccan order, the Thelemite order, the Hecan order, the Hecan order, all of these orders, light is information. Light is science. Anybody can access that light. Okay? And what is that light here from or for? Well, if it's from who, which is the most ancient creative force we can point to, the most ancient creative force documented, which you call the creator of all things, the source. Who? All right. And it's for anybody who can access it and anybody who can understand it. You understand? That's why they have certain things set up like the riddle of the Sphinx. OK. And, and being able to ask somebody to be one, ask one. The same reason why they put in the biblical scripture is what? Ask, seek, and then knock. Meaning you get to that door, you ask the question, you set up this question like the scientific method, you have your hypothesis, you go through your experiments and you're seeking, but the moment that you get to that door where you have to have that eureka moment and strike gold, all right, you have to be able to get through that door. And unless Ta is there, all right, to open that door for you because he's the opener, or unless he's there to show you how many times to knock, let me tell you something. The police, a lot of times, they would knock on people's door, don't realize why people wouldn't come to the doors because you're knocking like the police. If the police just knew a long time ago that the reason why niggas wasn't answering the door, the reason why niggas was running through the back and jumping out the windows because you knock like the police. Niggas don't knock like that. We know ain't nobody coming in our house doing nothing. We know that ain't us. We know we doing this. That's us. We gonna make a beat. If anything we gonna do, niggas is gonna make a beat. Okay, the police didn't know that. Well, then that means you don't even really have to ask who it is when somebody come to your door. If that's your family and they do this, you know that's one of yours. You can still ask. My point is this. when Once we show you how to knock, then you can get through that door. All right? Or we'll give you a key. And when we give you the key, now you can get through that door. Or we'll give you a password, which is still the same thing. We'll give you a password, which is also a key, and then you can get through that door. So who is the secret to magic? Or who is the secret of magic? Once you understand, the same way with the Masonic travels, okay, that you didn't create consciously to your own recollect recollection, you didn't create any of the elements that you would even be using to do magic or to perform the arts, all right? You didn't do that. You have to have humility, okay? The humbleness to be able to obtain that ego that the sorcerers obtain or the, the Buddhists obtain or the Buddhas or the Christ or all of that. The ego or the power of the authority, the ability to author and write, author write, 
all right, that you will obtain after you walk through the order that allows for you to get there. You have to be humble first, okay? So the secret to magic or the sacred of magic hides behind or rests behind who? Okay, because it was intentionally hidden. But why was it intentionally hidden? Because not everybody with eyes could see, but he who has eyes can see. Say with me. Not everybody with an eye can see, but he who has eye can see. What's my point here? My point here, if you look into the word oculus, all right, what is an oculus? An eye, go look it up, Latin, oculus. And then you say, what does it mean to hide something? What does it mean when something is hidden? That's called the occult knowledge or the occult wisdom. Arco, oculus, eye, all right? Which is why when people think of the Illuminati, the first thing, the image that comes to their mind is an eye. Why? Because again, not everybody with an eye can see, but he who has an eye can see. Once you know what that means, then you get through the next door. What does it mean, face? It means that you could be looking at something, okay? This is where you get into light itself, because light is what allows you to see, all right? If you don't know that it's all an illusion, okay, then you would literally believe what you see. They say seeing is believing, not for everybody. Seeing isn't believing for everybody. You understand? Let's say if you didn't know what CGI was or what it looked like, you saw a video of a UFO, and you said, wow, I knew they were going to start showing themselves. And you send it to somebody who's an expert in CGI, and they start pointing out to you every way that you could tell that it's CGI. But for the person who's never thought to even research CGI or computer-generated images or how to form them and how to decipher whether or not they are and discern, then they would just accept it for what it was. Seeing is believing. And their belief would take them to the next level of what? Being up under whatever that spell was. Okay, those thoughts that got put into words to create the program or the CGI, because all of it's still programming. And they'll be up under it, meaning they will subscribe to whatever that idea is. Why you have to remember with magic to subscribe, listen, is to come up under the writings of. Sub is under. Scribe is the writings of a thing. Okay? So people ask me, do you subscribe to them? Do you sub I don't subscribe to anything. You understand? I'm the one with the pen. We write things out, and we let people deal with whatever is happening after we write it. You understand? That's why we remember. You have to be reminded about the one who comes with the pen as a scribe. Remember, scribing is magic. We'll get back around to it. You understand? So when you want to take the next step, you have to be able to use your eye. Okay? And not everybody who has an eye can see. Well, then that means that you have to learn what CGI looks like. You have to learn what an illusion looks like. What does it take, all right, to create an illusion? Before CGI, you had something way simpler. It still wasn't the same. It was referred to as smoke and mirrors. It was a whole mechanism. All right, because of the way they release the smoke and the positioning of the mirror, they could cause something to appear to you, like the hologram technology. And if you don't know what a hologram technology would yield, then you would think that Tupac really performed on that stage. Are you with me? So seeing is believing, but believing is being what? Be lied. And to be belied is to be lied to or to be tricked. Okay. Can the eyes deceive you? Yes, they can. Can you look and swear up and down that you saw something? Yes, you can. Is there such thing scientifically, go research this, as a false memory? Yes, there is. That will actually be the explanation as to why people have subscribed to the idea of all of these different types of Mandela effects that have been pushed forth. The Berenstein Bears, the Pillsbury Doughboy, all the different Mandela effects. They missed a very small piece of detail and because they missed it, they thought that there was a split in the reality. Now, if no one was able to point out to them what those splits were, they would go on and take it to the grave. Okay? That the bear's thing was spelt this way at one point in time and it switched. Even if the author themselves came out and said, yo, we ran it this way for a particular reason, but because we had a Jewish name, we started to change it up because they said we needed to change it up. You go look at the old books. We have the old books where we have the name this way. But then the newer books don't have it that way. People say, no, that's all a glitch. 
No, your mind glitched because you didn't pay attention to a very minor detail. A minor detail that you didn't think you had to pay attention to anyway. You wouldn't have been paying attention to it until somebody came on a YouTube video and said, look, this is what is referred to as a Mandela effect. But it's a false memory. You can remember something that didn't happen. So if you can remember something that didn't happen, what makes you think that somebody can't show you an image intentionally to put you in that mind frame for a future event where you will respond based off of whatever they showed you subliminally because you think something happened that didn't happen. Like Ye said, slavery was a choice. He never said it. And if Ye never said slavery was a choice, but all of these tabloids and these people that ran this for all these years, all these different songs and articles and people stepping out against him, he never said that. He never said those words, but if you bring it up to a person, they will swear up and down and he said that's a Mandela effect to them. However, it is a false memory because you accepted the environment of whatever that idea was and you took it on as truth. Why? For one, it was more convenient to do it that way. Are you with me? So how do magicians get over on people? That's where you get into the difference between magic, M-A-G-I-C, and what was referred to in some of the occult practices, magic, M-A-G-I-C-K. Are you with me? And the reason why they separated the two is that people like Alistair was trying to say there's a, a ritual or ceremonial magic, and then you got what these illusionists do on stage with the smoke and mirrors or the holograms. Stay with me, because hollow is what? A spirit, and a gram is a message. <laughs> you got to pick up on what I'm telling you, because that's the smoke and mirrors. All right. So when you're dealing with the sciences of magic, all right, and you have these illusionists and they're called that for a reason, they have the ability to do something that's called the sleight of hand. The sleight of hand. All right. Meaning they tell you, look over here. And what they're doing is over here. But they say, look over here and you'll use your eye. All right. Your oculus and you will go in that direction and you will see what you see. And you start taking on the whole idea of the atmosphere of whatever that world is in your observation at that point. And what I'm doing is really behind here. And they did that. Go ahead. And I'm, I was gonna say they did that when they did the Martin Luther King shooting. When 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 Jesse said they came from the bushes, they they it was like a mixed direction. Yeah. Right. Righteous. That happens all the time. The misdirection, the deviation. All right is to, for one, maintain the control of the situation. The police officers do it all the time. They do it with questioning. They ask you how your day is. Let me tell you something, they don't care, but you still think they do. They ask you where you coming from. Let me tell you something, they don't care, but you still think they do. You understand? Their whole purpose is to pull you into their world where you'll exist under their law. It's called juris, Diction, never forget it. I've told you it before, so don't forget it. Juries is a law, and diction is something that is spoken or uttered. The moment that they ask you, you got any idea on you? All right. They open up a world of contract with you. They open up a door that you walk through that you don't even have to walk through because people don't want to deal with the inconvenience of having to, at that point, take on the reins and construct their own world they'll what submit or come up under the might submit they will admit as might sub is under they'll come up under the might of another person all right and next thing they know they're up under the jurisdiction of whoever spoke to them keep in mind that word spoke because that's how the magicians and everybody had to learn all right because you're speaking of the power of the tongue you have the mind you have the tongue all right then you have the pen then you have the sword all of it's the same thing is about making incisions that alter the realm using different mediums. You don't need a magic wand when you got a pen. All right? You don't need you don't need a pen when you got a tongue. Okay? And you don't have to open your mouth and use your tongue when you have a spine connected to your brain. Your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system is a magic wand circuit within itself. Are you with me? So they use the sleight of hand. And they say, look over here. And you look over there, and they do something else over here. And you ask them, how did you do that? What do they say? A real magician or a true magician or a good magician never reveals his secrets. 
Same situation as the Masonic walk. If you understand what I'm explaining. Never reveal. Why? Because it gives you an edge or a one up on a person. Okay? Look at what's being said that people have glossed over for all their life. Say, look, let me show you a magic trick. Say it slow. A magic trick. And people get excited and say, ooh, a magic trick. And if you got some people who really get into to the delusion, they get tricked. They say, ooh, do it again. <laughs> they're telling you they're deceiving you up front. It's a trick. But people fall for it. Are you with me? And then somebody will say, what? I'm going to pull a rabbit out of my hat. Okay? Then they show you the hat. It's empty. You don't know whether or not the hat is empty, but they showed you the hat. And because you saw it, and you didn't see the rabbit, you thought, this must mean that the hat is empty. And so you start anticipating an appearance of a rabbit. The key word I use is an appearance. Okay? Now watch this. I'm going to take this pair of glasses right here. Right? I don't know if this is the best object to use, but you can see the reflection. All right, and I'm gonna make it disappear. Some of y'all think I can't do it, some of y'all think I can. I'm gonna make this pair of glasses disappear. I made it disappear, meaning the glasses are not appearing anymore. I still can see them, but to you, they just disappeared. And now I'm gonna make them appear again. Abra Kadabra. Abracadabar, Abracadabar, voila, here it is. <laughs> he said, that's not magic, exactly, but if I were to do this with all this extra slight of hand shit, you'd be like, wow, this is exactly what they do. So then what's the key point here? To disappear does not mean vanish. Are you with me? The law of thermodynamics states to you, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. These glasses are what's referred to as an energetic composition. Are you with me? So this means that these glasses are composed of energy. You with me? That can't be created nor destroyed. So if I were to tell you I made it disappear, according to the science that holds your realm together, you cannot make these glasses disappear by vanishing them because no matter what you do with these glasses, they will still exist. I hope y'all don't think, I don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> the point is, they know that people don't know the simplest of science and so they want to be tricked, they want to be deceived, right? And when they're deceived, what tends to happen? They say, do it again because there was a play on the senses. Are you with me? So what are the five senses? Watch this. People say sight. People say touch. People say smell. People say hearing. People say taste. All right? A magician says feeling. Feeling. You say, what are the five senses? Feeling. How are the five senses feeling? Well, in order to touch, you have to feel. <laughs> Are you with me? You have to make contact with whatever the other energetic compositions or configurations are to touch something. All right? In order to smell, whatever the scent is has to make it to register through your nostrils into your brain. Are you with me? In order to taste, the microbial eye on your tongue have to be touched. All right? For you to be able to sense whatever that information is so the food comes in contact with your tongue. Are you with me? In order to hear, there has to be an audio, okay, that registers in your ear, okay, for you to let that information come through that sensory input compartment to get to your brain, okay? In order to see something, something has to enter in through your iris and your retina to get down to your brain and say, this is the image being reflected onto me. Whatever you say, okay, of those five senses, information still has to reach to your body or to your being or to your essence. Okay, more specifically, your brain. 
okay, which yields all of that. So the point is, these magicians take advantage of the fact that people don't know that. Because no matter what the trick is, you know there's an answer to all of it. Okay? But some people will rather just be tricked. That's the world we live in. Some people say, that's crazy how you did that. But if you went through three years of trying to get that trick correct, and you realize all the little intricate details of what he did, the communication, the conversation, all of that. If you were to go through yourself down that same line or that same order, you would be like, that one shit. That ain't no magic. That ain't nothing crazy. That ain't even nothing special. Okay. So then you will look at politics, the many tricks, they with me, poly, many tricks, ticks, the same way. You would say, that ain't nothing but a Trump card. <laughs> You know what I mean? You would know what a Biden is. You would know what Obama Nation means. <laughs> you would understand Ronald Reagan. What was it? Ronald Wilson Reagan. Six, six, six. <laughs> you would know. You'd be able to read it. You say Bush. Oh, that's Beelzebub. <laughs> you would know the words. You would say, okay, all of this is magic. And they're playing their hands. Okay? Now, they don't always show their hands, and sometimes they got wild cards. My point is this, if you were to try to ask anybody who would receive what's called the upper hand, how are they doing this? And they tell you that we're not supposed to reveal. That means that they want you to continue to be tricked. This ties into the other school that I gave or lesson that I gave of masonry. Anybody that doesn't want to reveal you what masonry is, they want you to continue to be tricked because this whole world is built off of masonry. And this whole world is built off of magic. Now let's get into it. Righteous. That's where you get into the ancient science, the most ancient science that you can go to, of the magus or the magi, the wise men. When you say wise men, all you're saying is Wicca or Wiki, the Wiccans. All right. And when you say Wicca, you're saying those who mastered the tongue. Go look it up. W-I-K-A. Those who mastered the tongue. And Wicca is right there next to Hika or Heka, as some people say. Heka because it's hex, all right? Hika, all right? And what is Hika to say? Hika is to say magic in ancient Kemet. Are you with me? And if I were to hex somebody, so you say heck, hecka, all right? Hex. If you hex somebody, you're putting a spell on somebody, it's still pertaining to magic, all right? What is a hex? A hex is a spell. And what is hex also? The number that you put with a gram, a message, a hex, a message, a hecagram, or hexagram. And that's the six point star. Okay? So you have a key there. The key is your hecka. All right? And then you have a lock that needs to be opened, which is the LOC. What is LOC? Law of Correspondence. And you use that hecka or that hecka, okay, which I'll show you why that's attached to a key, to open up that lock. You said we're missing something, Faze. I'll tell you what you're missing. You have to remember that hecka didn't run alone. It was one of the attributes of somebody that you refer to as Atum Re or Re Atum, okay, or the sun, God Ra or Re, okay, Re, the sun, light. Remember that, it's important. Heka, okay, the magic of He, He, which is who, who is the creative force, all right, and what is Ka, spirit, okay, or universal spirit, or that which allows for the soul to thrive, that Aether, Ka, all right, so you said He or He, which is who, the creative source. This is all in ancient Kemet. Go look it up. Then you have K or Ka or Ki, which is literally to say a Ki, which is the spirit. And then you have Ra. If you put those words together, Ra or Re, He, Ki or Ka, you get another word called Reiki or Reiki, okay, which is Japanese. And Reiki or Riki will give you what? Re, Re, which is a universal spirit, all right? And Ki, which is also the vital life force. Are you with me? So when you learn the science of Heka, which is the law of correspondence, if you understand, because as above, so below, as below, so above, that comes from Heka. All right? That's not duality. Let's get that clear. That's why a lot of people are confused when it comes to the pentagram and the hexagram, as which one is representing as above, so below. It's the hexagram or the hexagram, not the pentagram. So let's etch all that out. Because when you flip the hexagram upside down, you still have the six-pointed star. You flip the pentagram upside down, you don't have the pentagram still. 
You understand? So that as above, so below is mathematically calculated in the hexagram. That is the science of hiccup. All right? When you open up that science, you start realizing, man, know thyself, and you'll understand all of the things outside of you. Every aspect of the self is interacting with outside, and every outside aspect is interacting with inside. Okay? So then you have a key there. So then your thought is what allows you to take it to the next level. Well, you'll ask to who to your thought. Where do I go now? And he'll tell you, oh, from out of the darkness into the light. Meaning, darkness is what you don't know. So you'll ASK, ask, seek, and knock, and you'll take that seven-step process to get to the light of the nine. From one to nine. Now you're out of the darkness into the light, so you become what? An active magician. Or musician, like you were speaking about. Or an active practitioner, which I don't like to call myself a practitioner, and I don't say I practice any of this because this is the real game now. This, this is the field. The game is on. We ain't practicing anymore. If you don't use it, you ain't using it. You understand? And if you just using it just to use it, you don't know what it was for. What was your purpose of becoming an adept if you can't add up to what's going on right now? Are you with me? If you're not adding on to what's happening, what was your purpose of becoming an adept? This is the Rosicrucian order because they start you off as an initiate, okay? Then you learn the science of the clairvoyance, which is still using your eye, all right? And then you learn what you're supposed to do with your hands as an adept, okay? So the science is to be able to use that heka or that huka, the spirit, the breath. As some of you say, ru, which I told you, R-H in ancient Kemet is what? Knowledge. So you use that knowledge that Tahuti told you to use Room, and now you can affect your reality. Take this magic wand that's referred to as a pen and write out new worlds because you have the author right. You have the authority. That's why they were upset with Jesus. He spoke with authority. He had the ability to say, I know you have heard it said, an eye for an eye, two for a two, but verily I say unto you, and verily I ain't nothing but another way to say amen. Go look it up. Amen. Amen. I move. Very like I say unto you, that if somebody slap you, turn the other cheek. And in the same breath, they'll say, well, he didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. Well, his idea of fulfillment was making changes and shifting certain things around for the time being. Are you with me? Okay. And so for the time being, all of you who are magicians, here is your magic wand, a pen. You start with a pen or you start with your tongue. You understand? Think about what would be the most ancient magic word that people still use to this day, even the ones who do stage or illusionary magic. It was a word or a phrase. Abra-ka-dabra. Abra-ka-dabra. You want to know what that would really be saying? It's multiple things. To say Abra, all right, or to say Abba, Evra, Abra, you're saying Abba as in the Father. Or whoever taught you, or whoever your master was, grandmaster. And Ka is the same spirit or Ru that was the knowledge of the information that we gave you, or whoever that adept or leader or guru or sensei was that gave you that information. And Dabra is nothing other than Dabar. And Dabar is a word that means speak, or what is spoken. Kedubar, what was spoken. You understand? So if I say Abra Kedabra, what I'm saying is I will create. As I speak. Okay? But a lot of people don't know that there's another way that it was said. Okay? Which was what? Abada ke dabra. Okay? And that was Chaldean. And it meant you're going to perish like the word. Or perish like the word. And there was somebody who a lot of people know about or think or believe about to this day who think didn't do magic, or think didn't know the arts, or think didn't know the sciences. It's a very specific name. His name is Jesus or Yeshua Isa. And he utilized, according to the Embassy Gospel of Thomas, he utilized the science of causing somebody to perish like the word. When he was upset with somebody, he said, yo, you're going to dwindle away or wither away like the tree will. And the person died. You understand? They say he was like five years old, seven years old, somewhere in between. When he did this, and everybody was upset. They said, yo, you killed him. You caused him to die. And then they said a, a boy was running and bumped into the nigga. You know what I'm saying? You see how niggas get upset in the club? 
when they get their J's stepped on and they get the shooting, and that's what Jesus did. A nigga was running. You think I'm making this up? Go read the Embassy Gospel of Thomas. <laughs> they said a nigga bumped into Jesus. Jesus said, nigga, who the fuck? He said, boy, your ass not finna make it to see the light of day. And the nigga died. He killed him with his word. They don't like to speak on that. <laughs> because that's a curse. That's what's referred to as curse words. People think curse words is saying fuck or shit. And no, curse words is you saying words that are meant to curse somebody. It's not the word itself. Why? Because if, nigga, if a nigga walk to your door and be like, you know what I'm saying, they knock on your door, y'all have a conversation, y'all homeboys, whatever, y'all kick it, and he get to roast you about your shoes. Right? He's like, I don't know what you got them bobos on for, da da da, da. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, keep going. I'm, I'm talking to my uh, my wife yeah, in the you. background. She making some to drink. Yeah, right. Good. I got you. So he get a joke you about your shoes. He get a roast you about your shoes. All right, and you be like, man, nigga, fuck you. You don't mean it to curse the person, okay? But if a nigga owe you some money, and you don't, the nigga don't want to owe you no money, don't want to pay your money up, and nigga get mad about it, say, nigga, fuck you. That's a curse word. That was intended to poison the person. Same word, same phrase, but there is a ka behind it, a spirit behind it. So don't tell me I can't curse in a church unless you know what it means. Because you'll read the book down. You know I mean? You'll read the word down and say the word hell. And in some households, that's a curse word. You understand? No, it's the spirit behind it. And the intention is very important because when it comes to magic, it's all about the intention and the reception. When you set an intention, you set the intention with thought about how is this going to be received, which is why your best protection from anybody who think they're doing magic on you is don't give a fuck about their power. That's how you disarm a magician. Being afraid, get your ass got. Being scared, thinking, oh, they're doing work on me. They're already working. It's already working. That means that whatever they put their thought to and their mind to has already entered into your reality. People have come to me. I'm not speaking just out the side of my neck. People have come to me about people having work on them. They said, what do I do? I said, have you laughed today? Did you laugh? They said, what do you mean? What's funny? That's, first of all, the first step is you got to laugh. You don't know that the first way that you can raise the frequency around you is to laugh. There's literally a genetic upregulation that occurs when you laugh. And if you know how epigenetics works, okay, you can affect the environment also. As you are a part of the environment that affects others. So if they sending out magic to you that's causing you to feel fretful, all right, or anxious or afraid, okay, it's working. You need to reverse it by first off laughing at them. And then for all of you who come from the religions or whatever your invocations are or your, your chants are, your prayers are, at that point, it's on you to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're not doing it out of fear. Because that's the first thing that weakens your psychic defense. And that's another thing you have to remember. Write it down or take note of it. Okay? That as a magician, which all of you are, whether you know it or not, you just have different levels. Everybody's a magician. If you can breathe in and out, you're using an element. And that element is called air. And it is what we use to represent knowledge throughout your biblical scriptures, throughout the Quran, throughout the Veda. Breath is important. The spirit of life is important. Vitality. And it's an element called air or shu. All right? So that breath is an element that you use every time you breathe in and out. Whether you like it or not, you're a magician. Now, you may not want to refer to yourself as a diviner, okay? Which I tell you, isn't that interesting that when you say a diviner or a divination, you put the word divine right there? Don't you think it's interesting that when they call people sorcerers, they put the word source right there in the word? And you call God the source of all creation. So if somebody was a sorcerer, that means that they're using the same power that Moses used. If somebody's a sorcerer, they're using the same power that uh, 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 Pharaoh used when he went up against Moses 
or his homeboys that was next to him. When they turned their staff, listen, their wands into a serpent or a snake. It's the same magic. But they argued and said, no. Their snake ate the other snake. I said, do you want to deal with the fact that if I walk into any church right now and ask a pastor to turn a staff into a snake, he could not do it? You're going to tell me Pharaoh, who's supposed to not even be in the goodwill or the good favor of God or all creation, had the ability to teach his little minions how to do the magic that Moses had to go through tooth and nail to learn how to do. And this magic that we're speaking about, your pastors can't do. So Pharaoh got pastor beat, but pastor is somebody who's supposed to be able to give me a message directly from God as a medium. But you tell me we're not supposed to use. We're not supposed to use mediums. Another thing they say we're not supposed to use or listen to is fortune tellers. So then why, when the disciples asked Jesus, what will be the signs of your coming? How will we know that you will arrive? When Jesus told them the parable of the fig tree and showed them what to look out for and all the things that were going to be happening before he came, that was a prophecy, as you call it. However, prophecy is fortune telling. Because if you look at what fortune telling is, it's not telling somebody they're fortunate. It's telling somebody what's going to happen before it happens. Okay, so not only did Moses use magic, he also used a medium, which is referred to as a magic wand. He wasn't the only one who had one because the Pharaoh and his homeboys had one. Listen to what I'm telling you. Okay? You had people like Elijah who knew black magic or what's referred to as Negro or Necromancy. Because Elijah was able to raise somebody up from the dead. Okay, that's black magic then. That's dead magic. To be able to breathe new life into a person. They said, but he did it through the power of God. And then I ask you, what is the power of God? How could Pharaoh use it? You mean the ka of who? Or he? You mean hiccup? The power of God. The ka of God? The spirit or the yield or what's referred to as a similar power, what? The chokure. Chokure. Go look it up. Chokure. When you get into the science of Reiki. Chokure. What does it sound like? Chokura. 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 Which are the seven points, all right, or the infinity stones that are lined up on your gauntlet called your spine or your magic wand. How was Elijah able to raise the dead through the power of God? What is the power of God? And that's what they don't want to tell people. The power of God is none other than, first of all, all creation is God. It has to be. That's where you get into the Hermeticus. All right? Of Hermes. Twitch Megestus. All right? The same sciences that Tahuti taught. Everything is all together. And there's nothing that you can add to God. There's nothing that you can take away from God. El Kalum is complete, holy or whole, all right, or put together. So anything you use at any given time comes from that source. And that source that you would know would either be the sun, Ra, okay, which Heka rise with, go, re go research it, you'll find it, that on that boat with Ra was Heka. A lot of people don't know that, or Heka. Right there. All right. Why did I tie it to the science of Reiki? Because it still gets to the, to the sound. Reiki is all about sound or tones. You understand? So as raw may be that source, or the tree may be the source, or the water may be the source, or the fire may be the source that you spark off, whatever the source is, anything you use, when you go to your stove and you put a pot on the stove and you turn on the flame, you are a sorcerer. Because you're using fire. You understand? If you're not supposed to use any of the elements because it will displease God, then you should just sit here until you die. Hold your breath and just dwindle away. But you won't do that because you know you need air. Okay, this is the same science of alchemy. Alchemy. All right, or chemistry. Chemistry is all about working with the elements. 
the different components of nature, as you call it. And in order to be an alchemist, you need to learn what those elements are. All right. So then that means in order for Moses to work with water, he had to be a waterbender or he had to understand the science of waterbending. That's how he split the Red Sea. He would not have been able to split the Red Sea without knowing how to do it. And if God was the only one that was supposed to do it, he would have never given Moses a magic wand or a scepter. The same scepter that appears in the movie Aladdin. Go look it up. <laughs> With Jafar, was the name? Was it Jafar? That had the scepter, the sorcerer? Moses had a scepter. And he was able to split the Red Sea with it. Okay? Which is water, an element. Okay, cool. So it appears that people are being taught to go against the same things that were referred to as miracles. When Jesus did it, they said it was works of God and miracles. Elijah did it, they said it was works of God and miracles. Moses did it, it was works of God. If I were to do any of the things that those people did though, they would say that I was a deceiver. If I were to go in public and turn water into wine, they would say, I'm deceiving people. This is deception, I'm a demon. The devils gave me the power. Which makes me think that they think that there's nobody else that could have done the works except those people between Genesis 1 1 to Revelation chapter, uh, what was it, uh, uh, 22, 19, 22, or 22, verse 19. You understand? That's as far as people could go, is where it's supposed to stop at. You understand? So the point is, it was a 21, one of them, you get what I'm saying. The point is, <laughs> There are more people who can do the magic. There are more people who can do the works, including yourself. All right? So then the school of magic is, well, to answer your question, who is the key to magic? Or who is the science of magic or the secret to magic? So then learn the breath. Master the breath first. The ability to allow, like the reason why you're here. Breathing in and out. Okay? Taking a deep breath causes you to be able to use your frontal lobe more. Okay? Shallow breaths could cause you to become more anxious. So you start learning how your consciousness is able to operate in the earth plane based off of your breathing. How you breathe. Okay, that's one element. Okay, when your body gets tired and fatigued and dehydrated, what does it need? It needs water. All right, you're doing magic right there. Get the water, put it in your system. You just sent electrical charges through your body. Are you with me? And balanced out what was at one point unbalanced or imbalanced. You understand? So it's all about elemental work. And when you breathe out, you're breathing out carbon dioxide, the yield of a fire. You're working with fire every time you breathe anyway. Are you with me? So it's all about elements. It's not some mystical voodoo, voodoo stuff. No, that's only because people are afraid to get into the science of it. I can find voodoo, all of that, throughout all of your books. And notice I said the emphasis gospel of Thomas because you didn't put that in the Bible, interestingly enough. There were certain books they left out. It's like, well, that would explain it because there's magic all through those books. People practicing magic all through those books, not to mention the fact that there's magic being practiced all through the Bible anyway. What were the spiritual gifts that Paul was speaking about in Corinthians? For one, speaking in tongues. Okay? It might sound spiritual until you realize we're just saying somebody was multilingual had the ability to speak to multiple people at one time in different languages. Okay, then that's a Wiccan because Wicca means the tongue. Wicca means language. And someone who understands Wicca or the Wiccan order teaches you all about what? The four elements, water, earth, okay, air, fire, and then the fifth element, which is what? Knowledge or the spirit, ruh, ka, reka, reiki. <laughs> Hika, whatever you want to call it, is still speaking about that which allows for you to be a conscious being here in this reality. Are you understand? Okay, so when you speak, there's a light that comes with you. The same reason why I just broke down to you, if you say, man, nigga, fuck you. I say, nigga, fuck you. One is a curse, one isn't. All right, so one has amber light, which is a lower vibratory light, and one has emerald light and above, which is the higher vibratory light. Speaking on a scale of nanometers. 
Are you with me? If you go 500 nanometers, you're sitting right there with green and you go up. Okay, which means you're vibrating faster and higher. Are you with me? So then somebody can come through with what's referred to as black magic to some performing those arts, but it's not for a dark reason. The reason is for the light. So when you think of Michael and his angels fighting Shaitan and his angels, does anybody say, no, they shouldn't be fighting? That's chaos. That's evil. We just want peace. No, don't nobody say that. They say they hope Michael wins and they say, shame the devil. Hope he don't win. OK, well, Michael had to be a disagreeable to a certain degree. Then he had to disagree with Shaitan. And he disagreed with Shaitan enough to war with him and his angels. But you'll say if Michael is an agreeable, yes, he's an agreeable when it comes to Allah Ta'ala or Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or God or Elo, the Elohim, the Neteru, whatever, the Najaru, the ones who you think are on your side. And why do I say you think you're on their on your side? Because if they show up and they say, where are your people at that were supposed to have on their all white and niggas out here in all black, no matter how many times you were screaming Jesus' name, what they say, that those people were going to walk up and say, didn't we do these works? Listen. Didn't we heal people in your name? Didn't we bring people out of the darkness in your name? We brought people to your name. We preached the gospel. That's how you're going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me. You were a worker. Key word is work. A worker of iniquity. What does this mean? It means that you got people screaming Jesus' name and they are 100% demonic beings. You got people running around talking about, I shook. Or back, and they are demons. You got people talking about Hotep and Ashe, and they are bloody red, dark beings hiding behind a tone. And they can only trick the people who don't know the sciences of magic to be able to detect whether something's CGI or real. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm still teaching now. I hope people. I'm still teaching. Are you with me? Man. Go ahead. What you got for me? And you going, little bro, you going in. Mm -hmm. Like, you going in, like, because a, a lot of stuff you teaching, man, it's like the, the old heads that's listening, they, they was on them classes that we used to have a long time ago. And it's like, it's amazing to hear you go in, go in. And I'm just, I, I don't want to interrupt you no more. I just want you to go in because you, you going in, little bro. You, you going in, bro. You, you saying some stuff that we said and you making it sound weird. You're making it sound way more better. You're making it sound to where it's going to another level. So yeah, we proud of you, man. Keep on going. Just keep on going. We ain't gonna interrupt you because we got we got a couple of questions. Uh, one dude asked the difference between science and and magic, but I think you already kind of like broke that down as you've been going. So yeah, so uh, yeah, just keep going, man. It, it, just keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm a mute. You just keep going. I got you. It depends on. Who you're dealing with and what works that what works they're portraying. That's why I did this. This could be a book. This could be, can I have some? This could be, I have something for you. Right? This is what magic is right here. It's sitting in the palm of my hand. This could be, I'm holding something up. This could be, I'm waiting for something to fall. The key thing is, this could be whatever you want it to be in your mind. But whatever it is, is what it is. So you ever had somebody do this and you put something in their hand, they're still looking at you? That's not what they wanted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you ever had somebody reach out with something, you know what I'm saying, in their hand and you took it and they're like, whoa, what you doing? They was asking for something. They had something in their hand, but it wasn't for you. They were asking you to give them something. You understand? My point is this. That's the difference between magic and science. Whether or not you can understand what's being done in that moment. So you'll think, oh, that's magic. No, that's just science. You'll think, oh, that's science. Oh, that's just magic. You know what I mean? But there's a science to magic, and magic is science. That's why Tahuti referred to it as magic science. Thoth, as you call him, referred to it as magic science when he explained about him building the pyramids. He said something like magic science. Go watch the movie Black Adam. Okay? When the Black Adam character was coming out on, I think it was uh, Shazam. No, it was, it was Black Adam, yeah. The Black Adam character was coming up out of the ground, or out of the grave that he was in, the prison that he was in. They started shooting at him. 
But all the bullets and stuff was bouncing off of him, and he grabbed one of the bullets, and he was like, your magic is puny magic. He was talking about a bullet, though, because magic is also technology. <laughs> if I say, then some niggas pulled up, and they pulled out the stick and got the light in the whole area up, they set the whole place on fire. If you don't know the context, you think that somebody literally pulled up with a stick, like they broke it off the tree and pointed it and said, Alakazam, and set my whole place on fire. That's not what it means. I said they pulled up with a stick. They shot us at Alakazam and lit my whole building up. So what's my point here? My point here is when you said magic mirror on the wall, Who's the greatest of them all? You said, this is so magical. It is a device, a mirror that can speak and respond. I say, what's the difference between magic mirror on the wall and Siri? If you put a big ass TV on your wall or device on your wall and you downloaded the program Siri on it and said, hey Siri, how's the weather today? And that motherfucker came back and said, it's going to be 75 degrees, partly cloudy. Are you with me? That is a magic mirror on the wall. So if somebody would have jumped their ass from the medieval time to right now and see you talking to this magic plate or magic brick in your hand called a phone, they'll go back and tell their homeboys that they got magic bricks in the future. They can communicate through magic bricks with each other. It's amazing. <laughs> you understand? Okay, my point. If you know the science, it ain't even magic no more. Once you get the science, it doesn't, it's, it's not elusive. It doesn't elude you. So that's why I say no to this between Abada Kadabra and Abra Kadabra. Because it's still dealing with what's being spoken. But one is dealing with taking something away, life being taken away. Another is saying getting life or yielding life. No to this between black magic, white magic, and neutral magic. There's a neutral too. And neutrality is what allows for you to really master both sciences. But don't tell me black magic is evil if God sent the angel of death to kill all the firstborn sons. And those who didn't know the science to protect themselves lost their children. You're going to tell me that's God's plan. But would you want that to happen to your children today? Would people want that to happen to their children? Because you, you didn't get the message that you were supposed to put some fucking uh, uh, hundred emoji over your door and shit and blood. You didn't get the message. So or get the green out. light. Or get the green light. You didn't get the message. So there's a Passover. But you don't get passed over. And you're like, bro, what the fuck? Well, that was dark. That was very dark. And it was very evil. And don't tell me God can't do evil when he put in the book himself, or they put it in there. Whoever wrote it said he can what? Create peace and evil. He knows what? The light and the dark. He understands both. He can kill. He can commit genocide. Don't tell me about that shall not kill if you don't understand the science to it. Because that was really for the Israelites. You with me? Because the angels didn't even abide by that law. So it wasn't a universal law. God himself committed many murders. And it seemed like all of the prophets had their hands in murder. And you say, well, it was because of God. So again, anybody can say that because you don't know what God is at that point. Unless you're trying to tell me that God is a physical being that somebody has to obey because they're a soldier of that cause or of that army. Then that makes sense to me. But then you're going to have to tell me, then why would you try to tell me that God was omnipresent? That means that there's a difference between God, the omnipresent essence that you're trying to speak about, which would just be existence. And all that is packed in it and out it. <laughs> That will be that God. And then the God of the Bible and the God of Al-Quran 
and the God uh, uh, Brahma, uh, uh, Vishnu, Shiva, all these other people, they're within that essence of El Kalum or the All. Then that means Shiva can use the All. <laughs> Brahma can use the All. Jesus can use the All. Shaitan can use the All. Anybody can use the All. Then you don't own God. Stop trying to have a monopoly on a power that you don't even understand yet. How are you going to tell me about something that was done by a being that exists everywhere? If a being takes up all space and no space at all at the same time, how can it do anything other than be? Because even the science of its being is something that human beings can't fathom. So how can it do a thing? How can God say, let there be light? God wouldn't be able to say anything. Not if it was all creation within itself. How is something that is all creation create something? You hear me? And then in the same breath, you're going to tell me energy cannot be created or destroyed. No. You're speaking about existence and all of the things that exist. That's why people think nature stops at the planet Earth. It doesn't. Nature is the stars. Nature is everything astronomical. Nature is the core of your planet. Nature is the magma, the sediment, everything that you think this reality is made of. The gas planets, the asteroid belt, the nebula, the supernova. That's nature. The atoms. The quasi-particles, all of that is nature, not just trees. Are you with me? And water. So my point is, God would not be omnipresent, neither would God be omniscient. If you're speaking about the God that was telling people to do things and said, I'm a jealous guy, how does God have an emotion at all to be able to identify an emotion when an emotion is a human being thing? When it might be a human could even amount to all of creation, what would be the purpose of my being human inside of creation? You with me? No, the truth is they never understood all of creation. So through theology, all right, and religion, they met in the center and said, we're just going to say all of it is God <laughs> and confuse every motherfucking body. They confused Everybody. <laughs> three words. I mean, three, three letters. Well, it's still words. But three letters. Confuse the whole earth plane. Are you with me? And then when you say what? It's all dogma. I say flip the word dogma around. Guess what you get? I'm God. Whoa. <laughs> That's a whole different conversation. I'm God. So to kill the confusion... You deal with science, the science aspect. That gets you to what the etymology would be. What? No, to know something. Science means to know. Go look at the etymology. Science. You deal with what you know. Then they say, well, a wise man knows. He knows nothing. The nigga who said that knew some shit. <laughs> That's why he said that. <laughs> no, you know what you know and you know what you don't know. So stop acting like you know what you don't know. You know what you don't know. So no. Just know. And when you know and become of the knowing, deal with what you know. And don't get upset with other people for what they know and you don't know. You know? <laughs> so you may not know what God is or who God is. But because you believe what God is, you want me to believe what you believe and you don't know. I know you don't know because you believe. And if I ask you and you know, you should be able to tell me what you know. Even if you can't tell me and don't know how to, you should at least know. It can get confusing because people want their beliefs to be knowledge. All right? So, again, the difference between magic and science, all right, is if you don't know why I'm doing my hair like this, ask. Ask. Then you get into the whole different science of, I could lie to you. <laughs> so instead of saying, I know why this nigga was doing his hands like that because I asked him, say, this is what he told me. <laughs> I asked him and he told me this because what if I come back around and say, nigga, I lied. You didn't really know. You just knew what I told you. 
So how about you go through the school of figuring out why the fuck would a nigga hold his hands like this? And you go through all of the different options and possibilities. Then you weigh them out and you deal with the environment of the time being when the motherfucker was doing it. And you weigh that out and say, there's a possibility that the reason why this nigga was doing it was this reason. So what am I showing you right now? You start acting like yourself. You get active as God is. What am I saying? Hyper, active, hypo. Theo, God, is. Hypothesis. And as God is, you're saying what? A question needs to be asked at that point. And you take it from that point on through the experiments, all right, until you get to the point where you can peer review your information and you test it with somebody else and say, what did you come up with? What did you come up with? And then humbly accept that even though you may want to know a thing and it may not be comfortable to not know, all right, when you don't know, you don't know. Are you with me? So what else you got for me? Yeah, right, hey, we got some more questions, man. Hey, uh, man, look, you going in, little bro, because a lot of this stuff we talked about a long time ago, but it was on private classes. Uh, Some of we put out with a 15 elder and them the other guys, but it's like you were, man, it's you special, bro. You special. It's like you, it's like all the shit that we was, took us a long time to put together. It's like, you just got it all down and you just dry, dropping it on. And it's, 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 it's beautiful, man. Uh, the next question I got for you, cause people use sig uh, uh, signatures, uh, these uh, signals, uh, they got different names for them. But uh, like, it, like each, they sigils, sigils, that's the word I'm looking for, sigils, where they draw the different symbols. And um, mm -hmm. even that all the way down to the fish being on back of Christian's car is magic. They don't understand it. That, that fish that they ride around, that's why right, Pisces really know most, you know, you get into it. But yep. like, but that's magic. So yep. like, so the sigils and signs and the symbols, could you go into a little bit of that, how that works with the uh, magic and how it plays on the psyche or the subconscious or whatever? All right. I can. And that's that's a perfect way to ask it. The psyche. The mind. Are you with me? The psyche is the mind. The mind is the brain. Okay? At least the brain is the center of what you think your mind is. Even when you have a dream, you're experiencing that dream from the center where your brain would be. All right. It ain't like you looking up at your face, your eyes or your oculus. Your eye is right there where the brain is connected to it to feed directly into the brain, whatever this reality is showing. So when you take a pen. All right. And you put it to some paper. And let's do this right here. I'm doing a sigil right now. This is a sigil. Okay? Now, I'm going to ask you, young elder, what is that? Uh, I could say it's the, the uh, Stargate. The the woman's uh, Stargate. I got to say it like that to keep it clean. It looked like a woman's Stargate. Okay. Uh, so I, can I can say it's yeah. it. A pen. I can say, I can say, I, I, like they do this in the little psychology class, right? So I can say what all I see, right? So I say the first thing I see is an opening, a door, a door, a door that I can go into, okay, the woman's Stargate. Uh, I can go into just a pen, or I can go into it look like a screwdriver. Uh, you know, I can just go over many things, but the first thing that comes to my mind is an opening, a door, a doorway when I see it, right? And uh, all, all like the woman's store gate, right? Yeah. Oh, right now, now uh, a T. I see. Uh, I see Tahoti. I see a pitchfork. I see. Uh, uh, I see two lines. I see. It's a whole bunch of stuff I can go into, but the the first thing that comes to my mind is a, a tool that's used to do mining with. That's what it was like to me, like a mining tool. Yeah. How about now? Now it looks like uh, a stick, man. The first thing that comes to my mind is the onk, though. There's a key. It's a key. It's a hoodie's key. Next thing that comes to my mind is the symbol for, I think, the uh, the male, I think I want to say. Uh, the next thing that comes to my mind 
is somebody hanging on a cross because you know that's they've been perpetuated on us. Uh, another thing that comes to my mind is Egypt. When I see that, I say the word Egypt or ancient Kemet comes to my mind. Th those words, uh, things pop up. Yeah. Okay. And uh, eternal life. Eternal life. Mm. Eternal life. Yeah. Right like now. Now we looking at. Uh, it looks like a, a guy standing on top of a pyramid. Mm -hmm. uh, eternal life on top of the pyramid. Uh, a stick man, just a, mm -hmm. a regular dude, a stick man. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I see a T. I see 360 degrees. I see a pyramid, which is one eight. I mean, 180. And then I see two squares with, with the T. I see 290 degrees. So I see 360 at the top, 290 degrees, and then 180 at the bottom. So I see, uh, yeah, so if you add all that up. And then I see like a pyramid with a T on the top. Uh, and I, a rock, it looked like a rock that's got some kind of because it's got like a little shade in the back, so it looked like it's rolling to the side. Like I said, so there's a whole bunch of shit you can go into if uh, yeah. how, it depends on how, how broad your mind is. You know what I'm saying? When was but you gonna stop? Like, it's, it's like, when would, you, when would you stop me and be like, yo, first of all, before you ask me what it is, is the image complete? They, and they couldn't have what, what you say. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear that. Am I clear? Is it boom? Yeah, you clear now? Damn, what the hell? Okay, all right, yeah. There you go. It's like, at what point do you ask, is the image complete? Yeah, right? Right? Because I, listen, we'll, listen, we got about 40 more minutes. I can keep going. I can take yep. up the whole 40 minutes. Yeah. Add a little here yeah. and a little there. I can make this into a dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Got the little nostrils and the yeah. eyes. You know, looking yeah. up, they go to the yeah. mouth right here. We can go on and yeah. on forever. Yeah. The point is, when we're dealing with sigil work, all right, it becomes a sigil when the image is complete. So let's deal with a real sigil. All right? Damn, face, you just made me think about something too while you're doing this of how they put those start out with like a like a uh, a phallus and draw like an animal around it. So when yep. they show it to the little kids in the movie, the kids yep. don't recognize it. Uh, aware, like alert, where they subconscious is picking up these sigils. Exactly. And they subconscious. You, know, you just made me think about how they do it now. Damn, that's right. crazy. That's so that's crazy. a sigil. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a right? six point star. Two pyramids, yeah. yeah. All right, yep. cool. It took. It was in my mind already. I'm still on. Your, I'm still on the question. Yeah. It was in my mind already. It went yeah. from in my mind to on the paper. That means something. That means I just brought something from the mental plane into into the material plane. Are you with me? And as soon as it came into the material plane, what was in my mind? All right? Now you can see it. So whoever did this, stay with me. I'm only going to draw three of these. But whoever did this at the top, these are sigils. A, B, C. They thought about how to give a sigil to a sound that was being made in the language is referred to as a phoneme. The word phone being there for sound. A phoneme, all the different sounds that each of these sigils in your alphabet or your Elif beta, or your alphabet in English, okay? All the different sounds that can make about 44 of them in English, okay? is laid out for you in sigils. So somebody's mind said, yo, the A will not only be an A as in a short A, they gave you a short and a long A. They gave you A and they gave you A. They said but. Then they said cup or sup. It's the same sigil. But it makes two sounds. Are you with me? So the point of sigils is to give human beings, because remember who the master scribe would have been, Tahuti. 
it gave human beings access to and a bridge between the mental and the material planes. Okay? So when I think of a cat, I can draw a cat. And depending on how much detail I pay attention to, the more realistic I can make that cat. Are you with me? So you ever seen it where somebody can draw a drawing and it, you can't really tell the difference between the drawing and the real thing? They're doing like an Instagram video or a TikTok video. Somebody got that much detail. You say, yo, how did they even pay attention to that much detail? Are you with me? And then you went from that to the cartoon drawings. And then you went from the cartoon drawings to cartoon movies. Then you went from the cartoon movies and the people with Pixar's and, and their productions, the 3D productions. Well, you say, damn, that looks real. And then you're going on and on and on. So right now, you watch a movie, you can't tell whether or not it's CGI or a computer-generated image. Stay with me because it's still the same thing if you realize it's called 360 teaching. Right back around to the same point. You can't tell. You don't know what you're looking at. All right? So for the person who can pay more attention to detail, they know more about what things are composed of. You ain't going to just draw a face and put a little line there and some, uh, some dots for some eyes and a little slit for a nose. No, you're going to pay attention to shading. You know how to shade different ways. You know how to dot and shade, cross shade, fade shade, all different types of ways. You know how to pay attention to depth of field and how people will look at something. That's why I just came back from the uh, uh, Museum of Illusions. How people see something is how they're going to see it. It's how it's going to register in their brain unless they've been trained otherwise. You with me? So every sigil, all right, was just a small degree, okay, of what reality would be. And the person who was portraying that reality or putting it on paper or on the tablet was taking that mental plane reality and merging it with the material plane reality and saying, this is what I saw. Here it is on paper. And for the person who pays more attention to detail, they could recreate what's in their brain more. All right. So what's really important when it comes to sigils? Details. All right. And also knowing what something is going to be used for. That's why I said, when are you going to stop me and say, is this the complete image? Because if I just drew that line and gave it to you and said, go teach people about this, you will be teaching people about the line. They can have all their different thoughts about it. So somebody says a one, somebody says a capital I, you know, so somebody says an L, somebody, whatever they wanted to say it was, but it was incomplete. They built whole stories off of something that was an incomplete science. Until we show up and say, no, family. <laughs> you put the little line at the top, you put the little circle, put the little lines at the bottom. It's a, it's a man. It's a stick man. That's the complete image. You with me? So sigils hold a frequency if we really get it down to the magic. We got down to the basics of it. The, the magic is if I can take something from the material of the mental plane and bring it to the material plane, then I can take an intention and do the same thing. You understand? That's why people got started becoming afraid of symbols in history. Because certain witches or warlocks or sorcerers had the ability to use symbols to fuck people up. <laughs> All right? They could trap people with them. Circles were used. The cross was used. All these different things were symbols and sigils that held a frequency that could be either used as a weapon, like the pentagram is used as a weapon. The upside down five-pointed star with a circle in it might as well be a wrecking ball. If you don't know, you don't know. You can play like you know what you're talking about. You're dealing with somebody who knows what they're talking about. You don't know, you don't know. Ain't shit you can teach about it. A pentagram is a weapon. Pentacle, different story. When you said pentagram and you were throwing that bitch through whatever you threw it through, you threw it through there to cause destruction. Why? Because you took the spirit and you put it on the bottom. When you take somebody's spirit out of their crown or their roof and you put it in a roof, they are going to destroy themselves. That's the science. Even Levi don't know that. You with me? The science is whatever the seed is for whoever the person doing the magic or operating or doing the works is, whatever the seed is, if their seed is at the crown, they'll do heavenly works. 
If that seed is in hell, they'll do the works of the devil. Simple. So the same science applies to if you put the five points to say a woman standing upright and you got the spirit of the woman in her crown, which is the fifth element. Go watch the fifth element movie. and They made it a woman attached to the divine color or the pink color or divinity. Go watch the movie again. Fifth element. It was all about the woman. If you flip her upside down, like they did in the Do Anything for Cloud music video with Offset and Cardi B, okay, then you just put the G on the root. That's why people like Larry Hoover talk, put the G on the crown. And Larry Hoover also taught mind, body, and soul as what people refer to as the Mir Cabo or the Bakamir. You hear me? So the purpose of a sigil is to do works. That's why people say they doing work on you. Most of the time, it's dealing with a pen, depending on whatever the pen was. It could be dove's blood. It could be dragon's blood. It could be water pen or, or blue ink. All right? It could be grave pen or creation pen, which is black ink. It could be neutral pen, which is where you take black paper or chalk paper and you write in white. Charcoal paper. And you write in white. You with me? So for whoever's doing the works, they're taking a pen and they're creating symbols and writing things out. What the Mason say, so mold it be. This is written. It was written. This is how it was written. This is how it will be. <laughs> so mold it be. Kun fire kun. Are you with me? So to create a logo, because you say logos, you say spirit. I say all you got to do is flip logos around, you get sojo or sigil. If they're creating a logo, when businesses are creating their logos, they put a thought into it. You're going to say, this is going to represent whatever we're doing. And not only do you see the McDonald's golden arches, you also hear the ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. Because they gave it a song or a tone. You hear me? So this is another way that you can trick people, too, because if I give you a cross. Yeah, they call it a jingle. A jingle. A jingle. <laughs> Listen. If I give you this cross, this is a cross. People walk around with it. And I say, do you know what that is? They say, oh yeah, this is the symbol of Jesus Christ. Is it? I say, you chose to pick the murder weapon? This is what they killed him with. But if you really want to get into it, they didn't kill him with a cross. Not that cross. They killed him what, with what would have been referred to as a staros in Greek which really would have looked like this. But you don't see nobody walk around with this. They walk around with the mystic Tao, which is this. You hear me? My point is this. People will walk around with it, not to disrespect anybody's religion. It's just a question. Why did y'all choose the murder weapon? You understand? I've seen pictures of Tupac on people's shirt. You know what I mean? Not the gun that killed him. I've seen people walk around with their homeboys, not the gun that killed him or the knife that killed her. Are you with me? My point is this. They didn't sell this as death. They, sell, they sold this as salvation. This is still a logo, though, attached to a story where somebody still had to die. But because they take this and sold it as a, what? If they didn't sell it, then tell me that they're giving out chains. They sell in the cross. They sell the Bible. They sold this image or this logo as this is where you go through salvation. Meaning what? People have to die to get there. Subliminally, this is what they're going to think. Death. Well, if you're going to tell me this isn't a symbol of death, then stop telling me he died on this. And tell me what the true science of it is. But they don't know the true science. My point is this. Once you get the science of sigils down pat and logos down pat, then you start being able to identify what symbols mean what. And then you're not just looking at the symbol itself. You pay attention to the, to the rhetoric that comes with it, the sciences that have been betrayed with it, whatever it is that people have delivered with that symbol, okay? 
And then you start being able to break down what the science is at that point for the whole, what they call, brand. Are you with me? And they know how to get their brand out. They put it in a major spell. They call it a broadcasting. They broadcast. They cast the whole spell abroad. And everybody gets wind of, which is another element, what this one. They do it through the media, which is just another way to say medium. Their medium is television. Their medium is the internet. Their medium is what they use to push out their spells to the masses or broadcast. Okay? And that's how people see a cross and think salvation. They don't see a cross and think death, which they should, because that's what happened on that cross. You get me? So you can also hide sciences and sigils where a lot of people will see the unk and they'll think, oh, the unk means eternal life. But they may not know that there's documentation presenting that that was actually a key, literally a key that was used to open doors. There was also a levitation device. There's a million different ways. So the sigil is the same thing with this. <laughs> so it gets down to a very simple statement. If you know, you know. If you don't, ask. Where people set themselves apart from the ones who know, or people sell themselves short, or people fall short, is you act like you know, but you don't. If you know, you know, and then what? You do what somebody who knows does. By the way, say, if you knew better, you do better. Yeah. You let me? Hey. You know, that's oh, what the decision Okay. I got another question for you because uh that's what I was telling this chick that she was reading these uh doing the witchcraft or whatever. So I come down from a Louisiana where it's some real people doing this shit down there, you know, like they call it voodoo, whatever that mm -hmm. now. Uh my cousin was dating a girl who was a witch, and uh he didn't know she was a witch. Her whole family were witches down in Louisiana, and she put something on them. My granddaddy knew what it was because we was kids then. We didn't know nothing really too much about it. We was just learning about it. But mm -hmm. she put, used to feed, you know, the menstrual cycle. You know about that. I heard you mention it uh, the, through the, through the uh, spaghetti. They're like, oh, come mm -hmm. over here and eat this spaghetti. I don't eat nobody's spaghetti, bro. I don't. Yep. I just don't. Yep. I don't that's yeah, so then she used to feed, do that, and she used to, she, she had him all so, so much wrapped into it that she mm -hmm. stabbed him. With the, she stabbed him with a knife, and mm -hmm. then he went to the hospital and got stitched up. And the police asked who stitched, who stabbed. Him. He said he stabbed himself. Like that's how that's how how strong illusion that she had on him. So mm -hmm. well, I guess what I'm saying is uh, about the intentions, because because that cause that girl some came back to her for her doing it. Could you break down when you're doing the magic and people casting spells and speaking curses on people like you said? Is it a comeback for that, or is it a comma, or is it a boomerang effect on whatever you put out? You get this, like you reap what you sow type thing. You know what I'm saying? Could you go in a little bit on that? I could. <clears throat> Somebody who robs a whole bunch of establishments might get away with 99 robberies. They don't know their limitation. The hundredth robbery, they get life in prison. You understand? They didn't know their limitations. Same thing with this magic shit. When you're doing magic, of course, now what I'm about to tell you is what we're not supposed to tell. <laughs> of course, if you're subject to it, karma visit everybody. However, when you have authority, you know how not to piss karma off. When you have authority, uh, karma will work with you. Are you with me? Karma is its own entity. What is the U.S.'s karma for Hiroshima and Nagasaki? When did they nuke us back? People say, well, that was an evil act. Yeah, but where was the karma? Don't tell me crown syndrome was the karma. They did that. That's their program. Don't tell me AIDS was the karma. Uh, that's their program. 
Were you a big enough beast or God? All right. That ain't how karma work. Because you have to ask yourself, if you believe in God, what will be God? What will be God's karma for committing genocide and flooding the whole planet? Because we know he felt bad about it. He made a covenant to say he'll never do it again, at least not that way, because he saw how treacherous it was. So here's the science. When you're doing a thing, you know, only you know, whether or not you're guilty. People think guilty means you did it. Now imagine. Guilty don't mean you did it. Guilty means there's remorse. Guilty don't mean you did thing. Guilty means you're judging yourself and condemning yourself for what you did. That's guilt. You understand? So if somebody would have come in and harmed somebody's child, there's a two-year-old sitting in the middle of the living room floor. Somebody comes through and stomps the child to death. And the father comes in and witnesses the last of the act. And blows the person's brains out. Is the father guilty of murder? He said, of course he's guilty of murder. Because he killed somebody. You probably shouldn't touch magic. Because you're going to fuck yourself up. I know plenty of people who done touched it and fucked they self up. The first thing I was taught as a four-year-old when I first had verbal questions of what the craft was was to whom much is given, much is required. I'm going to repeat that two more times. To whom much is given, much is required. To whom much is given, much is required. Yeah, we're going to give you these ancient mysteries, especially because you have the questions at this age. However, we only giving it to you because we know you're not going to abuse it. We know you won't abuse it. It's the same thing with real life. Same thing with real life. I tell people that I'm same thing with real life. I'm the person who everybody talk about this one phone call. You never seen a nigga say all they have to do is make one call. <laughs> you know all them street niggas trying to I got one, I'm one, I can make one phone call. Just one? <laughs> so after that one phone call, what else you got? Because some of us can get any district we want shut down. It's just like that. Any district we want shut down. Anybody we need found, it's just some of us who just, we really are secretly plugged in that way. It's not something you come out here screaming to niggas. It's just some shit. It's, it's just what it is. Now, you might remind the motherfucker and say, look, nigga, this, all, this, all we got to do is do this. But the reason why we got it like that, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I made calls. And in the middle of the call, because I know what's coming with this call, I had to renege and shut down the call. For one, because I'm responsible. And for two, these motherfuckers don't even know what they're getting into. It's not even fair. They don't know what it, they literally don't know what's gonna happen. Hey, hell no. Nah. Let go. Let it go. You sure? Because we let it go. And then they go back to whatever shadows they exist in. You never know about them. You would never hear about them. It's the same thing with this magic. You have responsibility with it. Who else spoke this way? Jesus. When Jesus said, nigga, don't you know? Remember they came to try to kill him. Or no, they tried to, they tried to capture him first. And Peter them took out the sword, slicing niggas' ears and shit. Right? And Jesus was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, player. Chill. Chill. Relax. You forgot who I am? He said, don't you know? I can make one phone call. <laughs> said, nigga, all it takes is one phone. Jesus will pop his shit now. He said, all it takes is one phone call. He didn't say 12 niggas. He said 12 legions. That means 12 lot of niggas. 12 packs of a lot of whoever them angels or demons would have been. He said them niggas will pull up on my behalf just because I told them to. And didn't make the call. He didn't make the call. That's magic. So if you're worried about karma... You might want to check self. Because let me tell you something, just so for those of you who may not understand what I'm saying. The reason why I got to keep jumping between religion and uh, uh, sciences and all that is because you don't, then most people wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have survived this conversation. 
First of all, disclaimer, my intention was not and is not to disrespect anybody's religion. However, if you take me questioning it disrespectfully, I can't do anything about that. I don't own that. That's you. It's not my intention to disrespect. However, I will question and ask for you to question me. Okay? The point of it all is when you have any one of these adducts and these masters who touch the craft, they'll tell you. You're responsible for what you do, and you know what you do. So who is your judge? In all actuality, you are. So everything that I did to the music industry, and I did. I did a lot to them. And I ain't doing it in, 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 in private. I did it out in the up, open in public. I cast spells on their music industry. I hexed their music industry in their face. They couldn't do nothing about it. They didn't even know that we were allowed to do that. The reason why they thought we weren't is because we don't have magicians all this time. And nobody ever thought to hex the beast. Nobody ever thought. Maybe they didn't think they were powerful enough. Maybe they didn't think they, the work, they didn't think their work would be righteous enough. Maybe their heart wouldn't have been in the right place. Because you still have to be able to maintain some type of neutrality to figure out what evil is. Because you could be evil. I hope y'all caught that. There was nobody who said, fuck that. We casting spells on Hollywood. It seemed like every country's motherfucker just wanted to tell us what Hollywood was. There's a holly tree, you know, it's found over here, and then this is the, the fucking magic chick that it do. Okay, tell that nigga that he was supposed to then take that same science and reverse it. But him not capable. You with me? I waged war with the music industry intentionally, and when all of their pillars, listen to what I'm saying, I'm answering it. When all them pillars fell, I had a window seat. It was called the shade room. And then when I was on Clubhouse, people would make rooms about it every damn week or every month. Every week or every month, there was somebody collapsing and removing themselves from the earth plane. Or being removed from the earth plane. Every time it happened from the year 2020 to last year, late last year, even earlier this year, I would just acknowledge that the work was being done. And it happened so often that people literally start asking, where is God? What's happening? What's all this darkness? And I had to let them know, uh, the devil's music industry is collapsing and you're asking why is God not stopping it? They losing people. And they losing power. Those are the devil's soldiers. Those are the devil's messengers. Why are Christians crying? You shouldn't drop a single tear when Baphomet's pillars collapse. What's my point? My point was, even though that was and still is my standpoint, I still was neutral enough to understand why people were feeling how they were feeling. However, I had no remorse because that is God's work. So when you go into the shadows, the only one who knows whether or not what you're saying is true when you have remorse or don't have remorse for what you do and the words that you put in out, the only one who knows whether or not you had the heart enough to truly do that with Fibonacci in, in mind or the golden ratio in mind or order in mind, the only one who knows that is you. And that goes into the shadow work. So if you're working in alignment with the Fibonacci sequence or keeping all things in order, which is a, what, inevitably continuous spiral that says, this is how we will maintain the golden age, even when it doesn't appear to be erect. If you're able to do that, then karma has no reason to fuck with you. It's only when you step outside of that order and you don't understand the most basic principles, the agami, the sanchita. Some of y'all got to research karma because it's more than one element to it. All right? If you don't understand the basic principles of how to interact with her, and we give her a feminine aspect or characteristic, if you don't know, if you don't understand it, then it will bite you. But as long as you do understand it, then yeah, it will work for you. And let me tell you something else before I leave off of that point. When I was seven years old, 
My only was standing at the altar. We were doing our works. And she had the Mars oil, all this other stuff. I said, Umi, which is my mother, for those of you who don't know that. I said, Umi, I said, um, you ever thought about this? I was seven. I said, you ever thought about this? I said, we have protection oil. And protection oil is supposed to protect you. I said, well, then why don't people use protection oil to protect themselves from karma? And she was standing there looking shocked. She was like, what did you just say? I said, yeah, I mean, it's protection oil. I mean, if you got to release an attack and you just want to clear it up, why not use protection oil from the karma to protect yourself from any negative karma that might come to you? My point is this. Magic may be set in stone, but it's not set in stone. You could change the meaning of this sigil right here tomorrow. And you could have children of your own that come out and teach whatever that meaning would be. 300 years from now, it'd be whatever you said it was. You create as you speak or you create as you write. You with me? So there is a potential for karma to negatively impact a person. However, you have to remember one of the key principles of the Hermeticus is the universe is mental, mentalism. All is mind. Okay? So you know whether or not you wrong somebody. You know. You know whether or not you were being self-righteous and trying to act like you were coming in the name of righteousness or if you were truly considering that which righteousness causes for you to consider, which is not only justice and truth, my art, but also the new world that it will yield when that justice or that truth is brought forth. If you are really considering that, man, karma ain't gonna fuck with you. She needs you, as a matter of fact. She gonna ask you what you need. She gonna visit motherfuckers for you. Right. Hey, you right, man. Because uh, now that you say that, I got a cousin, man, and, and he just shot like three, four different people. Well, he killed them, right? But it's like the people that he that he his name D'Angelo. Listen to the name D'Angelo, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the people that he that he you know, it's like he don't he the type of person he don't go looking for that, right? But it seems like all the bad guys some kind of way attract to him, and then he take them out. Like the like the dude did the last dude. He, this dude robbed his grandma. He robbed his uncle that was for his uh, chick that was paralyzed. He killed his own cousin. I mean, this dude was just tormenting people. He was a demon tormenting his family and tormenting everybody around him. And then he ran into my cousin, and then boom, that that, that was his that that was his end, the end of his road. Because like, cause he came to my cousin and tried to bully him, and then he thought that my cousin was he. My cousin didn't even hesitate, man. He just took this dude clean off the earth, man. <laughs> so, and my cousin, the same day he got out of jail, and they. They didn't give him his gun back, but they say, "Oh yeah, after the after we do the investigation, we'll give you a gun back." So it's like mm -hmm. he just walked. Like you got people out here like that. That's that the universe used to eliminate somebody who just a a, a tyrant to to it to the universe, you know, to to the environment, you know. The people get well. What you say about that? About the people like the energy like that for the people. Sometimes the universe use them as they like they chair beans. But they work for the unit. They work for good. Like you know, what I'm saying, just like uh, you no, know, we put the the, the, uh, the guard. We put chair beans to keep them out, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you got the. What do you say about all their good chair beans or people who out here like that? That you no, know, do do you work for the universe and take people out. There's bad guys. Yeah, I would say that. I would say, and even like oh, uh, even my bad. Even like um. Uh, like, like people, if you watch Frank Lucas, American Gangster, just to add this part to give you another idea. Mm -hmm. Frank Lucas was a criminal. Mm -hmm. Now, people, people were rooting for Frank Lucas. Even I ain't gonna lie, even kind of I was working for him a little bit, but he was a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And the guy that was busting him, who was uh Richie, he was a good guy, really. The uh, white boy, he was a good guy taking this this dude that was killing people with this hat with this doogie. The white guy really was the good guy. But yep. he would, but he, but he looked at it as a terror beam. Like it, it takes a criminal to catch a criminal, or stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. Add to it. Go ahead, go ahead, my bad. Now I'm right there with you for for your cousin's situation. I'm not. I know that was just an example. I'm not the judge to be able to say whether or not he did an agreeable or a disagreeable deed. Um, again, a lot of this is subjective, and a lot of it is dealing with whoever the person is. And I know even though the person might have been a tyrant. 
Somebody loved him. You know what I mean? Somebody thought, you know, that he, he was God's angel. You feel me? So I don't know anybody. I don't know the whole story. What I can say is, and a lot of people may not want to hear this. When somebody leaves the earth plane, there's nothing that you can do about that moment of departure. So there was some divinity there, even if it was an evil deed. That's where, do you accept that the divine has an evil essence to it also? In order to yield an evil being. That's why I say again, the all spark doesn't care whether or not you're good or evil. The all spark is, which allows it to be evil or good. It takes on whatever the form is of whoever the being is. So when I say good cherubim, I wouldn't say good cherubim or cherubim or good seraphim. I wouldn't say evil cherubim or evil seraphim. I would say Lucifer could shock everybody tomorrow. <laughs> Shaitan could come forth tomorrow and say, you know what? I've been fucking up. I want to give this world back over to God. We're going to walk in alignment with all the orders and the commandments. And I promise you that if Lucifer himself were to come forth and say, God is the one true God, Jesus Christ lived, all right, Rasulullah is a messenger of the Most High, uh, uh, Muhammad is the messenger of the Most High, or Allah, if he were to come out and just do all the shit that are tied to the religion and its positivity and its agreeableness, you still go have Billions of people saying, fuck that, that nigga Shaitan is tripping. We like this world. Shaitan is like, no, nigga, like, no, 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 no. Check this out. I run this shit. I'm saying we going back to God. They be like, nigga, fuck you and God. It's niggas who gonna do that. It's niggas who have become more of the devil than the devil is. I promise you, some niggas got the devil shook. Some niggas got him shook. The devil be nervous to let certain niggas reincarnate into his world. Say, so you again? Are you with me? My point is this. <laughs> Anybody can do any work. That's why I said there's a neutrality that you assume. Just as much as I'm a teacher of emerald light, that's why I'm telling people, don't make me the subject. Just pay attention to what I'm saying and what I'm doing. And then figure out where you fit in with those works because you're here right now. Because what if I go amber tomorrow? Which we don't go amber. <laughs> Emerald don't go amber, but what if it happened? What do you do? Do you stop doing the works because Faze ain't doing the works anymore? If I do an evil deed or do some evil things tomorrow, do you say because Faze, because I'm capable, because Faze did some evil shit, damn. Ain't no reason to be on this on this green light walk because even that nigga, no. If you did it for me, you ain't do it. Because it had to be you that did it. Are you with me? So yeah, you got people who are doing the works of what you call God or divine, but that means that everybody would be because in some way, shape, form, or fashion, everybody's doing some type of work that is affecting tomorrow. All right? Some way, shape, form, or fashion, everybody's doing a work that is an effect of the past where you get into karma. Where you get into parabda and all these other different bhaktamana, all these different karmas. All right? Look up the four types of karma and research it, and you'll get what I'm saying. So you got the future, then you got the mature karma. Everybody is already doing what will be ultimately the inevitable. Because this is where you get into the law of determinism. So everything happens for a reason. Well, the only separating factor of the reason is the person who is observing that reason. To say that wasn't a good reason or that was a bad reason or that was a bad reason or that, you know, it wasn't a bad reason or it was a good reason. You with me? So for the person who says, I'm going to kill this person because this person is bad for the environment, they've only made up in their mind that the person is bad for the environment. But what if they don't know that the person that was there killing all those people was somebody who was supposed to clean up the environment? What if the people he was killing was people that were supposed to be killed? And if that's too heavy of a, a decision to, to make for you, then stop stepping into that position. Let God judge what Pop say. Let the Lord judge the criminals. 
Let the Lord judge the criminals because y'all don't judge fair. If you say murder gets you life, it shouldn't be no situation that a motherfucker can get away with murder. There's no such thing as a justified murder if murder is the crime that gets somebody this amount of time. Y'all don't judge fair. You judge based off of whatever you feel in the moment, whatever evidence appears real, all right? And it could be 100% false or it could be 100% true. So all I'm saying is there are many different types of beings. Some of them have been created for a purpose. Some of them haven't. Some of them have been created just to be created or yielded just to be yielded. But everybody with a conscience, whether it's a jinn or an, an archangel or a human being or a dog, they have some type of conscience to do a thing. All right. They can do evil things or harmful things. Wicked things is the word you're looking for. Or they can do virtuous things. They can work, do the work of the nefarious or the virtuous. You with me? So it depends on it depends on what you're going to do with whatever. Even what I told you this shadow, which we have to come back and do another one of these two. But what I taught you and told you this shadow, remember this key thing. It's all about your voc. Remember voc, okay? Because we get into voc is about your word, and your word is your intention that's set behind that word. All right. If I say an invocation, what is an invocation? If I invoke something, voc. If I invoke something, I call on somebody or call on something. Don't tell me Christians or religious people don't invoke. You You invoke Allah. You invoke Rasulullah. You invoke Jesus. You invoke the Holy Spirit. You understand? Or you evoke. That's another thing. Evoke and invoke. They want in the same. But evoke is saying you want to give rise to. When you want people to catch the Holy Spirit, you're evoking the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? And what is voc? Vocab. Vocabulary. And the word list, which is your vocabulary, is how many words you can choose to put into motion what your thoughts are, even if you don't speak them. So just remember the key word, word. In the beginning was the word. And let that word represent whatever knowledge or information or spirit that you have. And remember all spark, because whoever touches that all spark, you can do with that light, whatever you please. And once you get to that point, you say, well, I can look at the devil and say, this is where the devil went wrong. And I can understand that if too much pride get in me, if too much ego get in me, if too much mutiny is associated with my motion, then I can become the devil. Or if I want to bring a world to order and create things with life and say, let's make sure this thing doesn't go into disorder, then I can become God. You understand? It's all about the word. Go back to the root word. Even when we say root, you're saying magic, doing roots. Get back connected with that spirit. Breathe in, breathe out. Consider yourself for once. Remember that you exist. Breathe and remember. And then just choose. That's where you get into the thelemite order, which we'll come back to later. But thelema, which means will or choice. Thelema, go look it up. The etymology, it means will. I'm not a thelemite, but I did study that order. All right? Once you learn that will and that choice, you're taking that breath in, you breathe out, you can choose whether or not you're going to slap shit out somebody or whether or not you're going to use that same hand to help them across the street. You understand? That's magic. The ultimate choice and the magic itself is the action that comes with that choice. All right. And the science of that magic is that which you know that allows you to commence that magic. You with me? Yeah. And hey, we at the two hour mark. Man, when I tell you this is another banger. I mean, I'm about to go back and listen to this again because you dropped so many highlights up in this joint. It's a lot of highlights on this tape. I appreciate uh, it. Yeah. So, uh, hey, y'all, we got like 500 people in here. Hey, show my brother uh, Faye some love on the cash app. Well, you send him one dollar, ten dollar, a hundred dollars. You you can really put him in the game with a hundred dollars. Send him a hundred dollars, man. Everybody, man, put him in the game. And like I said, that dude said this brother got to be protected. Yeah, you see, man, this dude is like, like I know the master teacher proud, man, because this dude is like a super tight. You a whap, you a super weapon, man, to me, like, cause it's like all the hard work that I put in. It's like somebody else can continue it. Somebody else can take the information and keep on going with it. It's like you the continuation of this whole this whole green light energy that we've been working on for a long time. You the continuation of it, man. So I'm proud to see that, man, I'm telling you, you like to walk in the cash your records, though, because a lot of stuff you said, and we, we talked about it, like the elders, we talked about a lot of this stuff, but, uh, uh, and we probably said it on a couple of takes, but it's like you, like, to have you be 25 and to uh, to be able to take in and comprehend all, all the information and assimilate it like you do, man. Man, this is this is this, this 
it's a it's a freedom, it's a peace for me. It's a it's a I can let my shoulders down a little bit. Like this ain't like it ain't over. Like you know, yeah, I can let my shoulders down. So, oh, don't, let them, don't, let them doubt, don't let them doubt too much. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they still, hey, I'm still I'm still in yeah. there, but it's like I got we got help, man. We got more help. Like 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 you, like you fight niggas, ten niggas, and then somebody come to help you and take a little heat off you, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 By the time we get some help. Uh, Baba said we were gonna get some help. He said that the aiders will come, the helpers, they'll mm -hmm. come eventually to help. And uh, man, that green light is, is going out. So uh, we about to get off, man. Y'all, y'all, what might if you just coming in late, you may want to rewind this joint. Uh, tomorrow, you may want to listen to all of me to put out so far recently because every it. single one has got high powered, levitating type information up in this joint, man. I'm telling you, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, so don't forget about the 10 books. If you ain't got the 10 books, uh, you send a donation, you leave the uh, emails and the links, uh, the, uh, play, play for Change. So don't forget about the 10 books if you want to get the 10 books, y'all. Some people say they already signed the donations already. So cool. Hey, I so like I said, we're going to be back on, y'all. What you say, uh, Faze? I just want to tell people I appreciate them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, show them some love, y'all. Hey, this is family, y'all. This is family because... Hey, the work that Faze finna put in for us, he he taking us to that next level. He giving us that. It's like we're gonna be invisible now. With the information he giving us, we finna go invisible. With the green light, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, man. Like today, the cops was pulling everybody over. I I I, I was going by that. Usually they usually pull us over for speed, right? Because they they mm -hmm. target angels, Michael's angels, right? But now mm -hmm. that green light, we invisible. Mm -hmm. I'm invisible with the green mm -hmm. light. I'm invisible. They can't even see us no more. It's like when I, once I got the green on, I'm, I'm moving in the green light. It's like mm -hmm. they didn't even see me. I'm invisible. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I, I can go by them and they they just mess with this guy. It's just like it's like this green light to me. It's like when the Israelites was in, like you pointed it out. Like when they so no, the green light to me is like that same. It's like what's happening now. It's like something's about to come over the planet. And this mm -hmm. green light is gonna protect, be part of your protection. That what what his spirit is gonna overlook your family, overlook your house, right? Gonna pass by your house and go to the niggas that don't got that green light, right? That energy, and it, not necessarily having it on your house, but on as far as your your physical vessel, right? Mm -hmm. And the green light shining. All right, so mm -hmm. we want to get up out of here, man. Why do? Why do? Uh, as alaikum, shalom alaikum, peace be unto you, uh, to your family. We out, man. We out. Uh, Wadu. It's Wadu. Hotel. Peace. Hit that like.